Hi everybody, it's Carla from Casey Creates and I have been working on a really fun project. So thanks for joining me. If you're interested in seeing how I make these uh, corn husk Christmas trees, I hope you'll stay with me. Well, let me give you a little background really quick. I'll tell you these were in the Hobby Lobby 75% off sale and um, they were $5.99 and I got them for I think $1.75 and at the time I was thinking about these Christmas trees that I've been seeing with the um, real natural burlap and twine and they're made um, like cones and since I've been on this natural nature kind of Christmas tree decoration theme I came up with this idea I haven't seen them done like this well, you know, there's no new ideas, I'm sure, but as I was thinking of it, I came up with how I was going to create these Christmas trees um, and then later decided to look and see. So I, I did go and find that people did make Christmas trees using the corn husks, um, but I'll show you how I've been doing it. So I hope everybody is well, and I'm real excited that you're here watching and um, I'm just going to sit and craft for a minute and hopefully we can chat and catch up, but um, of course I need another glue stick. I've been having so much fun and the goal was to have a, a different theme of Christmas this year, keeping it a little more simple um, and natural, but I wanted to create a lot of my decorations and not make it a stressful, hurried situation and so that's why I started early um, making my Christmas decorations. I'm really glad I did. I've really been enjoying it. I just sat on the couch for this project and made a big pile of the corn husks and I just, ooh, I don't want to burn myself, put a little dollop of glue in the center and then folded it over and I'm going to layer them almost like you would do shingles on a roof, um, only they'll be like the, the leaves of my tree or the, you know, I guess the boughs of a tree, the bark. Um, and so those of you who like paper crafting, you might like this because these feel like paper and they make a really nice kind of crinkling noise as you're working with them so this has definitely been an enjoyable process and I was happy because I wanted to find somewhat inexpensive ways to create something that looked quality so I um, I have one finished that I can't show you the whole thing because it's just too tall um, but I'll do some still pictures in the end so that you can see what they look like together. Um, but I ended up with a huge bowl of them all folded over. And they sound a little bit like parchment paper. Anyway, they're a really pretty color and I think it really lends itself to that natural wood look. I'm going to trim these off and I'm going to finish working on this one just to show you how I've been doing it. I'm going to start with this smaller one just so I can get it in frame. But what I did was I just glued, started gluing them on with the hot glue and they stick really well. I made uh, my cones out of paper uh, poster board. But you could make them, you know, out of just some cardstock, um, or you could purchase cones. They do sell like the little styrofoam cones. I have some. These are rather small. I do know though that the hot glue does make the styrofoam melt um, if you're using the high temperature glue sticks. I'm just going to hold that down a little bit, but they do stick. I think hot glue is the best idea for these. 
just because they, they hold quickly. Now on the larger tree, I didn't have to trim them off because um, it was tall enough. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and trim several of these before I start gluing them down. So have you all been crafting on anything holiday related? If so, I'd love to know what you're working on. Um, I don't know where about you, but I feel like everything holiday hit the stores even earlier this year. But I think last year they were having some, you know, supply chain issues. Because I remember Joanne Fabrics didn't even get their Christmas ribbon in until November, I'm going to say. I know it was quite late. Um, but everything's been in the stores now since before Halloween, which means quite a bit of it is already picked over. Um, it makes me kind of sad for people who aren't able to get their supplies early by the time they're able to go out and get them. There's not much to choose from. But anyway, in my case, I'm going to use things that are a lot um, more of found objects. I've even made some of my like Charlie Brown trees out of branches from outdoors. I've made some of my stars that are going to go on the tree from branches and twine just because I want to keep my decorations rather understated. I did buy a container of new ornaments to mingle in and I'm going to show you that process too because it'll be a new process for me. It's going to be using what's called milk paint and you mix it. It's a powder form and apparently it's an ancient form of paint um, and it actually has milk protein in it. I don't know if what I bought does because I just got it on clearance a little small bottle of it from uh, Tuesday morning but I saw somebody use it to kind of antique a textural Christmas ornament and then I just happened to see some in the clearance section at Tuesday morning and it's the perfect color so I felt like it was meant to be so I'm gonna try the process and see how I like it but if you don't catch that video and are interested, just put milk paint in the search and it'll tell you about it. I haven't really read much more about it. That's all I know is it's a very old kind of paint that they used to make uh, and mix pigment with it. So can you see how I'm just kind of layering them like the shingles? on a roof. And you do kind of have to give it a little bit of drying time. But by the time you start getting to the top, it covers quickly. And since they're not glued all the way down, I bought some little fairy twinkle lights um, in soft white. I'm going to try and put the lights tucked under the little uh, tree bark or corn husk shingles and see if I can light them up because another thing that I learned when I've been looking up uh, Nordic and Scandinavian type Christmas decorations is light is a very important part of their decorations. I'm guessing it's because they don't get very much uh, daylight in the Nordic region of the world. And the, the days are a lot shorter and so capturing the light and candles and things like that 
would probably be very important to them. Um, I think it is difficult for people when the days are short and the sun doesn't shine very often. Some people get that. Is it called seasonal affective disorder? Even where I'm from in Wisconsin, our days were really short and we didn't get a lot of sunlight in the winter. The days could be really gray and long and lots of snow and cold and ice and that combination gets old pretty fast. Now don't get me wrong though, I love the snow and I definitely miss it living in the south. We are so excited when we get a fresh snowfall here and once we probably get one about once a winter if we're lucky a couple times we'll get snow but we have the luxury of it coming and then we can enjoy it and then it melts and goes away I think I got a big hot finger full there So we are enjoying a cloudy, rainy day today. We don't normally have, um, we haven't had much rain and we really needed it. So I'm not complaining, but um, there was a hurricane in Florida yesterday. So we're getting some of that rain. and. I think it was a fairly tame one compared to what they're used to getting, so we're grateful for that, but no hurricane is ever a welcome thing. <laughs> so I hope everybody in that region is doing okay. We're just getting the rain. They were expecting higher winds, but we didn't really get a lot of wind. The kids were hoping for some higher winds because they were contemplating calling school off today but it didn't happen and all the kiddos ended up going to school we'll probably get a couple inclement weather days because it doesn't take much to close schools in the south if if ice or storms are predicted they pretty much call school off early okay so I'm almost finished but I don't know about you I just love this is this what we call a crew color this golden straw color I don't know what they did to treat these corn husks if they actually dyed them they're all such perfect color that they may have dyed them I'm not sure the packaging is rather generic it just says corn husks I'm sure they're not I wouldn't use them for cooking you know I, I know they sell them in the grocery store for tamales. I don't think these are those. Um, but I'm sure you could probably use those for this project. I'm just going to do a couple more up top here. So I've got more to show you, you guys. I, I've got maybe two or three more design ideas that I worked on for my natural Christmas decorations. So I'll be coming back with another video, but I think I'll let the corn husk one be a video all on its own. Just getting this glue off my fingers. And then I'll go tack this one back down. It's a little trickier once you get to the top because I want them to be a little bit taller than the tip of my cone but look at how wonderful it is I did see um, 
one person's video where they took scissors and kind of curled the ends of the tree uh, of the corn husks so that the branches look like they were flipping up a little bit um, like you curl ribbon maybe but I didn't actually like that um, they almost looked like eyelashes I like them a little more um, you know it, downward in the shape a little flatter to the form but this is all trial and error I'm just having fun and because the tall one seemed to work out so well I decided I wanted a set of three and I'm not looking at the camera at all so I have no idea how this has been while I've been working on this I hope I haven't been too in your face or moving too fast I'm just gonna give this a good squeeze and then I'm thinking about let me see if I brought them over here I'm thinking about putting a wooden star on the top but it would have to be wooden and neutral and natural I wouldn't want anything sparkly um, but what I'll do is I'll do a still picture of how I decided to finish them off I also thought maybe it would be nice to put a little bit of uh, white on the tips to resemble snow I'm going to just try it on a plain one. I have a brush here because I'm not sure I'll like it and I don't want to ruin the tree. But I do have, what's this one? This is vanilla. So let's try it on just a plain one. Oh, that might be kind of pretty. Because it's real subtle. Maybe I will. Let's do it. Let's try it. And if I don't like it, I can turn it to the other side. Oh, I like that. I think that definitely says winter. Yeah, maybe without this snow, it might look a little like a grass hut or something. I want it to translate into a winter tree. So sometimes it's fun to just go for it. And I think I'm liking this. Yeah, I like it. So we'll put a little on the bottom. Not too much. And keep it really understated and simple. There we go. I think I should blend it a little more. I don't want it to look like a straight line. Oops. Well, I was concerned about the gesso on my hands and now I've got ac acrylic paint so <laughs> that just means I'm having a lot of fun okay Another water cup all right guys I think that's all so just stay tuned and I'll throw in a couple pictures of what they look like um, there's the tall one that won't get all the way in frame and then I'm going to spend a few more minutes and cover this one and I'll show you what I came up with. Thank you for watching with me and I'll be back again soon. Bye! So here are my natural corn husk trees finished. I did decide to go ahead and put a little wooden star on top and I really apologize for the lighting. I wish it was a little earlier in the day so that I had natural light, but um, I like how they translate into trees by layering them and adding a little bit of touch of the white paint to the ends. So just wanted to give you a glance and then I will 
put them with little lights and show you everything all together once all the decorations are finished. Thanks for watching.